Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. Today's video is all about trying it yourself. If you're wondering whether or not something will work in Microsoft Access, guess what? The best way to figure it out is to try it yourself. Now, this is really more of a public service announcement than a tip video. But the point of this video is, if you can figure something out on your own, you should. And I'm going to explain why. And it's not just because we don't want to answer your questions. We do. Okay, when I was a kid growing up in the 70s and 80s, yeah, I'm old. If I had a question about how something worked, I had three choices. I could look in my grandpa's then 30-year-old encyclopedia. It was written in like the 50s. I could go to the library or I could ask someone. So kids from my generation were used to asking questions of people, parents, teachers, authority figures, and so on. It was much easier than the alternative of looking at an encyclopedia or going to the library. And we were taught that there are no stupid questions, but there are lazy questions, especially today. Today, you literally carry a device in your pocket all day, every day, that can answer pretty much every question known to man within seconds. So before asking questions of other people, try giving the Google machine a whirl first. It's a whole lot faster than sending me an email or posting a message in a forum and then waiting hours or days for a response. Now, the first computer I learned how to program on was an old TRS-80 from Radio Shack. They had a computer in my second grade classroom, and then I begged my grandparents to buy me a Coco, a Color Computer 2, for Christmas that year. I had a couple of books, but I learned most of what I know now from tearing apart other people's code and from experimentation. Want to see if this little bit of code will work? Sure, let's give it a try. No? Oops. Delete it. Try again. Play with it. Get crazy. The same goes for learning Microsoft Access or pretty much anything else. Want to see if you can apply that format? Try it. Want to know if you can copy that control from one form to another? Sure, give it a shot. Want to know if X works with Y? Best way to find out? Try it yourself. Don't be lazy. Experiment with it. It'll be just as quick for you to do it yourself in a little sample database than it would be to post the question in a forum and wait for a response. Here are some actual questions I received, either in email, comments on my YouTube channel, or posts in my forums. This is just in the past week. And this is only a sample of them. All right, I, I got just a bunch more. I just picked a couple. Does conditional formatting work in a report? Yeah, try it. It does. Can you insert the time with control shift semicolon just like you can in Excel? Yeah, you can. That would have taken you about 10 seconds to find out. Is it possible to have a field name start with a number? I don't recommend it, but yeah, you can right there. Put it in a table and hit save. There you go. There you're answered. <laughs> no need to post it. Here are some other questions. Now, these ones aren't quite so bad because there could be some minor issues, but still, if you could figure it out by trying it yourself, do it. Can I copy a combo box from one form to another without having to run through the wizard each time? Yeah, sure. I've done it in a couple of my videos. Copy that combo box. See if it works. Test it. Try it. You got to make sure that the, the field name is the same so the control sources match. But aside from that, yeah. Again, easy to find out for yourself. What would happen if I tried to index a field, no duplicates, but there's already duplicate values in that field? I don't know. Give it a shot. It'll take you 30 seconds to find out. And yeah, you'll get an error message. It'll say there's duplicate values. Can't do it. Okay? But again... Do it yourself. You'll get, you'll get more satisfaction out of figuring it out for yourself. Now, keep in mind, these are good questions. I'm not saying that the people asking these questions are dumb by any means. I get asked questions like this all the time. People want to know the answers to questions like these. All I'm trying to point out is, if you can answer these questions yourself, do it. Do a little experimentation. It'll take you less time to try it in a sample database then to post it in my comments section or in my forum and wait for someone to respond to you. You'll save yourself some time. You'll save me some time. You'll save the forum moderators on my website some time. Think for yourself. Don't just get to typing. Don't type your question in. 
Think for yourself. Is this something I can try to figure out on my own? Is this something I can search for? What does Google have to say? I know a lot of people, especially from my generation, you get used to being addicted to being fed the answers, right? You, you raise your hand, you ask your teacher, well, what about this? Well, what about that? Okay, figure it out on your own. Try it. It's a, it's a computer. Just do it. <laughs> and if you can't figure it out on your own, try a quick Google search. Personally, I hate not knowing things. Even if I'm watching TV and something comes up, I don't know like a term. If I'm watching a TV show. Or if, you know, oh, is this, is this actor still alive? Or I have to look it up. It's, it's annoying. My fiance gets mad at me because I pause stuff all the time to look stuff up. But I hate not knowing the answers. All right, so take some time to learn how to find the answers. Right, learn how to Google search. Especially things that have a definite answer. Right, don't ask me something that you could easily ask Google. Right, like what's the maximum size of a short text field? All right, it's 255 characters, but you could Google that and have the answer faster than I'm going to reply to you. <laughs> now, by all means, if you've tried something yourself and you can't figure it out and you've checked the Google machine, then by all means, please ask. I'm not saying to never ask a question. I love answering questions. My moderators love answering questions. Someone just beamed in. But if it's something you can figure out yourself by trying it on your own, or with a Google search, then do it. You'll learn more by trying to figure things out on your own. If you're curious as to whether or not something will work, give it a shot. Have fun. Experiment. Be a mad scientist. Just make sure you don't go faster than 88 miles per hour. You know that aha moment that happens when the light bulb finally turns on after you figure something out yourself? I love that. One of the things I miss about teaching in the classroom is I used to love when someone finally got it, and they're like, oh, yeah. I loved watching that light bulb go off. You can just see their eyes light up. Right? You'll feel better about yourself and have a sense of accomplishment by figuring out things on your own. Now, make sure you experiment carefully and be responsible. A, make sure you back up your database before playing with it. Okay? Yeah, you, could you break something? Sure, it's possible, if you're depending on what you're doing. So make sure you're working on a backup copy. Don't work on a production copy. I'm guilty of this myself. Sometimes I tinker like on my website on the live copy of it when I shouldn't. And sometimes I, whoop, I break it and then the whole site goes down. So I'm, I'm kind of guilty of that myself. But especially with Access, just copy the file. If you're working on the front end, copy the front end file. Right? Don't work on the one that people are using if you're on a network. But feel free to play and have fun. Yeah, you might break something, but you can just restore your backup. Now, my moderators and I love helping people out and answering questions. But from now on, if your question is something you can easily figure out on your own, you're getting sent to this video. I've got a great group of guys who help me out on my website. But we see the same questions over and over and over again. And those are usually the ones that I'll make into these fast tip videos or a tech help video or a lesson or something. But a lot of questions are simply ones that people could answer for themselves if they would just take two seconds to experiment and try it on their own. So feel free to post your questions in my forums or in the comments section on my YouTube channel. But before you do, ask yourself, is this something I could figure out on my own first? So this has been a public service announcement. And yes, it qualifies as your fast tip for today. <laughs> so try it yourself. I'm Richard Ross. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access, too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout-out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website.
But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website. You can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.